Hi, I'm Tom Stevenson and welcome to MS Project Made Easy. Today we're going to look at creating a template that has your holidays going 10 years forward. So no matter what country you're in, I'm going to discuss a process that you can use that may take you a bit of time to do the first one, but then you don't have to really do it again for another 10 years. So that's the advantage of that. I'm a professor of construction management and you might have to do it sooner than that because some construction projects last five, six years, depending on what it is. Um, but uh, still, you don't want to be recreating uh, holidays and uh, those kind of exception days uh, every time that you start a new project if it's standard stuff. You want to get rid of this repetition if possible. So this is where spending an extra hour today saves you many hours in the future, assuming you do multiple projects all the time. So let's get started. Go to the project tab. And by the way, if you subscribe to my YouTube channel and you check on the Microsoft Project playlist, you'll see all kinds of other videos. If you want to dive more into creating different types of calendars and things like that, you'll see that on my playlist. And if you click notifications, you'll be updated of new videos on construction project management and also MS Project that come out uh, on my channel. All right, so let's get started. I'm going to go to the Project tab. I'm going to click Change Working Time. That's where we deal with uh, our calendars. And we've got our standard calendars. There's three calendars that are used. This, I'm going to use the standard one. We could create a new calendar. I show you how to do that in some of my other videos. Uh, on the playlist, usually one of the earlier videos that will be listed on my MS Project uh, playlist. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to start in January. So we'll start on New Year's Day and we'll work through the various months. So I usually like to click my mouse if possible first on the date that I'm after. I'm going to put New Year's Day. All right, so I'm going to put New Year's uh, Day. And so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to do it for one year straight and then I'm going to go back and I'm going to show you how you can make um, the adjustments for 10 years just so that we get the holidays. Some of you maybe aren't interested in the full 10 years and so you can tune out once you're, you've got uh, this part of it figured out. But New Year's Day, I'm going to put start here, start and finish. And so there, I've got New Year. So New Year's Day is now taken care of, right? And so now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to February. I live in Ontario, Canada. We have a holiday that's the third Monday of February called Family Day. So I'm going to put that one in here. And so I'm going to uh, click on there and I'm going to click here. So it, that's why I always like to click on the date first. That way it clicks. I don't have to go this back and forth stuff. But there you go. It's in there for this year. Then I would look at uh, Easter. Now you can look Google Easter and you can Google the different uh, dates that you may find on Easter. I took a screenshot of one just before uh, the session, but you could see uh, that on your screen. And so we've got for 2023, I've got here that Easter falls on uh, April 9th. And so I want to put in Good Friday. So I'm going to put in Good Friday, which is on April 7th. So I'm going to put Good Friday. And I'm going to put Good Friday 2023. Because Easter, every year it's on a different date. So I'm going to have to do Easter multiple times to get it for the 10 years. That's where the labor comes in of doing this once. I would have a Good Friday for 2024 and 25 and so forth. I'll show you some shortcuts for New Year's Day and Family Day, um, which are pretty good uh, afterwards. So we've got Good Friday 2023. All right, the next one that I'm going to do is the Victoria Day weekend. And so the Victoria Day weekend, that's usually the Monday before the 25th. Yes, in Canada, we still celebrate um, Queen Victoria's birthday. So. Uh, that's on the 22nd, and I'm going to put Victoria Day. If you have another holiday that your country uses on in May, I would put that in, and then you've got that one listed, okay? And then I'm going to go, we don't have anything in June, us. If you do, put it in. Uh, we have July 1st, so I'm going to put July 1st. It's showing on a Saturday right now. I'll show you how we deal with that later on. 
So I'm going to put uh, Canada Day. Canada Day. And I'm going to put, there it is, July 1st. Okay. So next thing I'm going to put is we have a civic holiday or Simcoe Day uh, that we have on the first Monday of August. So I'm going to call that Simcoe Day. These are going to be easy ones to fix for 10 years coming up. I'll show you that very quickly. Uh, and we're going to put Labor Day for September 4th. See, we're moving through these pretty good for the first year. It's always the first Monday. That's another quick one. Now in Canada, as opposed to the States, where you have your big Thanksgiving uh, Thursday in November, we have ours in October, and it's always the second Monday. So I'm going to go Thanksgiving Day. All right, I'm going to click here. If you have another holiday in October, put it in. So if you have another holiday, uh, put it in and uh, in October. Now, in Canada, it depends. Uh, we celebrate Remembrance Day in some provinces where it's like everybody gets it off and some they don't. In Ontario, it, you know, unless you're in the banking sector uh, and a few other sectors, you typically don't get Remembrance Day. I think if, uh, when I used to do training in Newfoundland and Calgary and that, if I remember, they do have uh, more common Remembrance Day. So if you do, put it in. Uh, you just click on that and you put Remembrance Day. I'm going to leave it out for now for me. And I'm going to put in for Christmas. All right. And so I'm going to put in Christmas. And we celebrate Boxing Day. That's the day after Christmas. It's not such a big de deal in the U.S. as it is here. Um, but it's kind of like our, our um, Black Friday, although Black Friday has become a big deal kind of in Canada, but not usually taken off. Uh, so we've got Christmas and Boxing Day. I'm going to put that over there. Now, so I should put this, that it says the 25th, and then I should put this, that it says the 26th. So it's those two days, right? So those two days off. So now I've just cycled through a typical year of holidays. So now I'm going to update this, and I'm going to fix it with the regular... Uh, ones going 10 years forward the regular ones not like the good fridays of the victoria days but the regular ones so new year's day i'm going to go to details and i'm going to in details i'm going to say yearly and i'm going to say on january 1st for 10 years so i'm going to say on january 1st for 10 years and so you see that it goes it says 2023 to 2032 so it's just put them in for 10 years family day details I'm going to put that in yearly and I'm going to say the third Monday of February for us. That's when it is right. So I'm going to say that now if you have a holiday and it's on a specific day because it's somebody's birthday or something, then you should stick with on that particular day. Uh, so for me, I'm going to put the third Monday of February for 10 occurrences. I'm going to click OK and then I'm going to put in. I'm going to skip the Good Friday and the Victoria Day for now. I'm going to go to Canada Day, and it's the same thing. It's one of those ones, it's on a specific day. So I'm going to say yearly, on July 1st, 10 occurrences. Click OK. And Simcoe Day, it is always the first Monday of August. This one is one and done. So we're going to say yearly, and we're going to say first Monday of August, 10 years. There we go. And the same with Labor Day. Labor Day is always the first Monday in September. Nice and easy to do. So I'm going to go yearly, the first Monday of September. And I'm going to say end after 10 occurrences. There we go. Got that in there. Then I'm going to say Thanksgiving Day, another easy one. Wow, we're getting there. So I'm going to say yearly, second Monday of October. This is for Canada, not for the U.S. U.S., you've got to wait till uh, November and put it in, right? So you've got there and after 10 occurrences. And so then I would, you know, of course, the next one is Christmas and Boxing Day because I said in Ontario we really don't have any mandatory uh, holidays in November. Uh, in the States, of course, you know, you would put in for your uh, Thanksgiving and then, you know, what you should be doing is, does, does our company work on that Friday? If we work on the Friday, fine. You leave it as a work day. 
If you never work on that Friday, then you block it off as a holiday. So you also have to look at maybe company specific things. If you know your company always does certain things, you need to block it off the way it happens. Like even when I'm talking Christmas in construction, very often, at least in Canada, you know, if this was a, a typical week uh, in Canada, if we looked at that, it would follow through this whole week for most people, they would take it off because usually the trade, at least in Toronto, you can't get the trades to work very much. You might have some unique projects where you do because it's a school and that's when you go in or something, but generally not much gets done during that week. So you're probably better to have it off, right? And if you do happen to work, that's fine. But if you don't have it off and you don't work, then it just means you're going to really be behind when you come back if you're monitoring the project schedule maybe you have liquidated damages on your project what have you now that i've done all that before i go too far you know what i'm going to click ok and i'm going to click save right i find that if you do too much stuff and you don't do that maybe you shut it down or you click the x and then you lose everything with saving calendar dates you got to remember to click ok if you just put all that in and click shut down it doesn't save any of it so don't go too far without saving um, those components. Now, I didn't fix Christmas Boxing Day. Let's do that. Let's do that for yearly for 10 uh, years on December 25th. And so that should be good. So if I check that out for 2024 and I go to January 2000 or 2024, it did it, it kept it for Christmas and Boxing Day for the 25th, but I don't think it kept it. So that's why it's good to check it. Did it do it here? So it didn't keep the second day for me. I thought I had a second day in there. So let's fix that. Let's see here. So there, I've got the second day of 2023. And did that keep it? So no, it's still not doing that. So it, it won't keep the second day for me. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to edit that. And that's why it's always good to check it. I wasn't sure of that. So I'm just going to, because I'm doing this this way for us, uh, I'm going to click that. That's good. Uh, so I got that. Now I'm going to put Boxing Day separate, seeing it didn't want to keep that. It's probably best I do it separate anyways. Boxing Day. And I'm going to click here, and then I'm going to click Details, and I'm going to say 10 Occurrences. Okay, so I've just done that uh, for Boxing Day, and I went Details. What did I do here? Daily. No, I don't want Daily. I want On 26 for end after 10 years. Wow, that would have been something 10 years off. So again, you got to be careful you don't go too quick. All right, so let's check. Is that better? All right. So I just want to show you what I generally do when I create a schedule too. I'm pretty good. I like holidays, so I'm pretty good at just looking at it and seeing what's going on. Well, I see that I edited that, but you know what? It's New Year's falls on a on a Sunday. Well, I'm going to get the Monday off that year. That's the way typically companies work. If yours doesn't, then that's fine. Leave it like that. But typically you would get the Monday off. So what I would then do is I would type in New Year's 2023. And I would click over here uh, that I've got January 2nd right and i would go over here and i would go january 2nd and i would click out of that so it should show me uh, if i go here it should show me january 2nd uh, 2023 uh, and over here because i guess it already had that there 2000 there we go now i've got it so that's how you have to that's why i always like to click on the date first then I don't have to go this back and forth business like I just had to do. And that's a good uh, illustration of why I like to do it that way and not do what I just did. So there you go. So now I've got that blocked off. It's okay to have that. It's a non-working day. You see the hatching over here. So that's fine to leave that. 
that that overlaps. But for January 2023, that is what happened. And then what I would end up doing is I would do this for every year. I would make sure that I'm good for all my years through. The truth is I'm probably going to be good for about five more years on January 1st. Uh, the way it goes is usually one year ahead until, you know, sometimes you have the leap year that, that comes into it. But if I look at it here, now I'm back on a Saturday. So then I have to do another one over here. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to click here and I'm going to put New Year's 2028 and that looks good okay so that looks good so now I'm going to go to New Year's 2029 let's see is it okay and if it is okay it's probably starting again so there now I'm gonna be good for three or four years after that so I've got my 10 years done so that was that's all I got to do New Year's is fixed and then the next one, family day is good because I don't have to worry about that. Good Friday, I've got to go in. I got to go through that list. I got to do one for each year. Like I was showing you, I just Google it, figure out where the Good Friday dates are. And then unfortunately, that's the way you have to plan and put them in because it really does change quite a bit. Now, if you just wanted to block the time off, you could pick an arbitrary Friday, say the first Friday in April for 10 years and block that off and then you can always adjust things later on in your schedule if you need to that's an option right so at least you've got it blocked off if it doesn't happen on that particular date you can just move it around when you're in that particular project that's another option if you didn't want to do that i would probably take the extra 10 or 15 minutes and just right now go through all of them if you're in canada go through all of these ones uh, for uh, victoria day July 1st, you're going to have some to do, just like I did for New Year's, but not a lot. August, you're done. September, you're done. Thanksgiving, you're done. So, and then you just got to deal with the Christmas. And Christmas, to be honest, very often, like I said, you got to look at those ones and think about them. Are we going to be stopping here and closing off there? Maybe that's what you want to do for the next 10 years and adjusting that. And if you do that, as long as you click OK, then you should have those holidays starting to show up. I'm in 2022, so I'm going to just move up a little bit here till I get to uh, just shrink this down a little bit. So I'm just going to go here uh, so that we can move a little bit quicker. So we're in October. And where are we here? There we go, December. Okay. And so now I'm just going to. Uh, make our calendar just a little bit bigger there we go and so I should be able to when I zoom out be able to see okay there we are I've got that if you don't see that then that means you don't have a holiday so it's always good to have a good sense of what's coming up in your project do you have the holidays I always tend to run it through quickly and just visually check that I've got all of my holidays in place for my entire um, project. I'm in 2024, so I didn't do those uh, Victoria Day ones yet. So I know that those ones aren't um, there, but I should see my, uh, I should see ones like my July 1st holiday uh, coming up uh, in there. And if I don't, and like the August, uh, where's the August one, the first Monday, I should see them. So that's another way. And of course, the, the other way to quickly do it is just to look at it in this, you know, you just sort of just scroll through and boom, 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 January, there you go, February, there you go, March, nothing in this case, because Good Friday is in April, May. So I just scroll through and I look at my holidays and I say, oh, that's on a Monday, that's on a Saturday, that can happen. I've got to fix that one in July. And so I would do that for the rest. I would just put the years in when you fix them. And I would do one holiday uh, at a uh, time, uh, fixing them throughout so that you have that uh, in place that way. And that, that should allow you to have everything sorted out and fixed. And then you've got the template saved for the next 10 years. So rather than me just step by step doing every one of those ones typed in and making you a little bit crazy listening to me, I'll just leave it at that. And what I will say though, is once you click okay, then what I would do is I would go file, save as, right? 
I'll put it in this calendar here. And maybe I'll just put uh, the letter B here, just make it a different title. And see where it says save as type? It has project template. You can save this as a template file. I'm gonna go save, it's a little bit different. Go save. And then it asks you, is there stuff you wanna remove from the template, right? Well, I didn't put anything in this template of costs, resource rates, any of this stuff, so it doesn't really matter to me. Uh, but it's good for you to know that you can save, say you had done a template schedule for a project and you wanted to keep a lot of the stuff or you wanted to remove it, but you wanted this to be a starting point template if you do it again. Say you build McDonald's restaurants or something and you got a template of standard stuff for that restaurant that you build. That could be a good file to save, but you could remove the baselines and actual values because you want to use the template amounts and start again. You could create that template as a starting point and then you can customize the template for the individual job. You just open the template, do file save as, whatever your project name is, and you're good to go. Or in this case, I can just go save and now it's saved it as a template file and that'll be just the file that I will open and then I'll do a file save as for whatever project name I want. And then I've got all of my holidays listed in that template and I don't have to redo them all. So I hope this has been helpful from a little bit different angle for those uh, more power users that want to try to save yourself some time and uh, help yourself out that way. Try to make things as effortless as possible. So I'm Tom Stevenson wishing you a wonderful day and we'll see you out there. Bye for now. And by the way, don't forget to uh, subscribe to my channel. Just click the subscribe, click the like button, give me a comment or two, and we'll see you in future videos. Bye for now.